I just spent two days with Grant Cardone and here's seven things I learned. Hey, my name is Dan Henry. I'm the co-founder of CloseDeals.com and I cannot wait to share with you the seven things I learned from Grant Cardone. On July 13, 2022, Steve Harward and Pete Vargas sent me a text and they said that Grant Cardone was holding a special two-day mastermind where he was inviting the best online entrepreneurs and online influencers into one room so that he could learn from them, learn how to collaborate with them, and pull back the curtain and show them how he built a billion dollar company. And he wanted to do this because he realized that collaboration is key and he wanted to handpick the people in this industry that he wanted to collaborate with. And he wasn't charging anyone a dime nor pitching anything. And to my surprise, I was on that list. I have no idea why, because there were people in that room who were doing $200 million a year in their business. I've done about 30 million in my business with a small team of five people, and so I have no idea why I was on that list. But you know what I said when they asked? Yes, I got my fat ass on a plane, went to Miami, and made sure I sat front row both days to that event. Not only did Grant wine and dine us, he paid for food, he paid for alcohol for those of us that wanted it, he took us out on a $150 million yacht, and even spent a hundred grand on a frickin' fireworks show just to entertain us, but I even got to take a ride on his $7 million helicopter, which the pilot tried to take some steep turns just to freak us out. Oh. Yeah, whoa, uh, G-forces, G-forces. But thankfully, I'm a student pilot, so it didn't work. Haha, Grant, I've foiled your plans. Do I look like a guy with a plan? <laughs> there were some super A-list internet marketers there, like Garrett J. White, Brian Page, Tanner Chichester, Cole Gordon, Rudy Maurer, Jason Fladlian, Stormy Wellington, and I even got to meet Timbaland. Yeah, the, the, the rap producer guy. But most importantly, Grant shared with us how he built a billion dollar company and he did three hours of Q&A each day. Now I took extensive notes, extensive notes. In fact, I took 51 notes, 51 golden eggs that I heard during that mastermind. And I put them in a PDF in vivid detail what they are, what they meant, and how to implement them. And I did this because I realized that 99% of the industry did not get invited to this event. And I hate the fact that you guys don't get to learn this gold that was shared. I mean, you had to do some amazing things to get in that room. You know what? You need this information so that you can go out and do amazing things so you can get invited to rooms like that. And so that's why I took these notes. Now you can check the link in the description of this video and you can download a copy of these notes absolutely free. Just click that link and I'll email them right over. But what I'm gonna do right now in this video is I'm gonna go over the first seven. I can't go over all 51 because this would be like a three hour video. So without further ado, let's hop right in. So the first thing was the biggest mistake not only he has made, but he's seen other entrepreneurs make and that is not repeating successes. Look at your past wins and do them again. Oftentimes people will buy the same thing two, three, four times and not even know it. So he gave an example of when he was selling tickets to an event, I think it was GrowthCon. They had a, a killer promotion and then when they did it a year later, they struggled to sell as many tickets and they were trying something new. They were trying some different things because they assumed that people were sick of or already saw whatever angle or whatever they did the previous year and they needed to come up with something new. But the new thing they came up with wasn't as good as the thing they did last year and they realized that so they went back and they changed it and they just did what worked the previous year and voila, it started working again. And the thing he said was like, people don't remember. They don't remember what your copy was. They don't remember what you did a month ago, let alone a year ago. And so that's the thing, repeating the wins. And I found this to be true because one year uh, we did a Halloween promotion for a discount on an online course that we were selling. And it was an online course that we didn't even sell anymore. It was discontinued and we just, we just did a massive discount and pushed it out for a Halloween sale. We did a funny video, all this jazz. And it worked really well. We did $200,000 in sales, just extra sales for that October. Well, the following year, I forgot that it was Halloween. 
and it was a week out and I realized, oh my gosh, we did not do any promotions for Halloween. Now there was no way we were gonna come up with a promotion, write copy, build a funnel, um, edit a video, blah, 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 in a week. So I did the only thing that was, was possible to do. I was either gonna not do a promotion or I was just gonna use the previous one. And I thought, well, I don't know, maybe I'll make 50 grand, that'd be great. Well, I go back, I turn the funnel back on, didn't change a single word, turn the ads back on, didn't change anything, and lo and behold, that week we did $150,000 in sales for the same exact product. And last, the year before that, we promoted it for three weeks. This particular year, we only promoted it for a week. And yes, a large portion of people bought again. Sure, some of them sent in an email and said, hey, I already bought this, and we went ahead and refunded them. But most most people didn't. How many times have you lost something in your home and bought it again? And then you find it and you're like, ah, oh, I bought it again. It happens. And so that was the first thing, repeating success. The next thing, people will know you for your work ethic or they won't know you at all. Win, lose, or draw, if you show how hard you work, people will love you. So for instance, let's say that you are trying to lose weight and you're, you're not like super jacked, right? Well, if you're showing yourself on the way to losing weight, and you're showing how hard you work, people love that, whether or not you're jacked or not. If you're trying to make more money, if you're trying to grow your company and you're showing how hard you're grinding, even if you aren't the number one in the industry, even if you, you whatever, right? The fact that you show how hard you work is what people remember. It's kind of like that scene in the movie Tin Cup with uh, Kevin Costner, where he wanted to hit a ball over a lake and he got frustrated that he couldn't. So even though he was about to win the US Open, he kept swinging, trying to hit it, and he went all the way to 12 strokes, finally got it over and sunk the ball in the hole. He lost the US Open, but he sunk that ball in the hole. And he said to his girlfriend, he said, man, I just gave up the US Open. And she says, listen, in five years, no one is gonna remember who won the US Open, but you know what they will remember? They'll remember your 12. In other words, they remembered his work ethic. The third one, and this one was really interesting, is don't wait till the end of a webinar to pitch. Grant said that most internet marketers will take an hour to teach something on a webinar and then they'll pitch. But he said that people that are ready to buy hyperactive buyers, they're not gonna wait for an hour. They're not gonna sit around and wait for an hour. They would have bought if you said it in the first five minutes. But because you didn't, they gone. And so his advice was, listen, at the beginning of a webinar, just say, here's what I'm selling, here's how much it is, and if you want it, you can go buy it. A certain amount of people will go ahead and go buy it, then you give the long webinar and all the other people who aren't yet convinced, they hear that, they stick around, and then they buy. He said when he started doing that, he started making far more money. Which brings me to the next point. People that have the most money have the least amount of time. And this is something that you have to realize in all of your sales and marketing. I can't tell you the amount of times I've seen somebody get on a sales call and the prospect is like, I'm ready to buy. And they're like, no, 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 we have to go through this script first. And it's like, no, dude, they're ready to buy. Take the payment. And that's the thing is you gotta realize that your most hyperactive buyers, the people that have the most money, they have the least time because they have the most money, right? If they've worked their butt off to be able to easily buy something, then they probably don't have a lot of time. I myself am one of those people. I'm a very busy dude. I'm always doing stuff. I'm keeping myself busy. And I've got to the point now where if I think for a moment that something will help me, I just buy it. I don't need to hear the pitch. I don't need to go through the webinar. I don't need to read the sales page. I'm like, mm, yeah, that, that'll probably help me. Buy, okay? You gotta give people like me and people like others that are ready to buy a chance to buy without making them wait. So beyond just webinars, start thinking about that in your business. All right, now the sixth one's really interesting. So Grant said that split testing is bullshit. Now, keep in mind, this is a room full of the best internet marketers in the world. And when he said that, all of our heads spun around like the freaking exorcist. Ah! Fuck this. Blech, puking in a 360 degree angle. And we were like, what do you mean by that? And then he explained it and we all felt like idiots. He said, listen, 90% of people make their buying decision by just glancing at something, by just getting the big idea. So when you split test like long videos, long form copy, all that stuff, 90% of people would have bought anyway. So only like five or 10% of people are actually reading it. So when you split test, only 5% of the data is uncorrupted. The rest of it is just like it happened to land on A or B. Now I personally still think that you should split test things like headlines because those are something people can see in an instant. But in terms of long form copy, totally makes sense. There's no reason to split test it because no one is reading it. And finally, the seventh is always say 
this is the best. So first of all, the best is subjective. So it's not like you're ever lying or being dishonest by saying that it's the best because that's subjective. But here's the thing, all of your competitors are saying they're the best, every single one of them. So if you don't say you're the best, literally you're starting below baseline. And so not saying that you're the best simply shows a lack of confidence, not data. And that's because everyone else is saying they're the best. So always say, I'm the best. Who the best? I'm the best. Who the best? I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm so that right there is seven things I learned from Grant Cardone after spending two days with him. Now there are 51 things I learned that I put in this PDF which you can see right here. And to be honest with you, as the day went on, the info got juicier and juicier and juicier. So if you really want to learn some massive, massive golden nuggets that were shared in that room, you want to go to the link below and grab that PDF. And that link is closeddeals.com slash 10x notes. Just in case you can't find it in the description. I really hope this video brought you value. I had to make $30 million and write a Wall Street Journal bestselling book to get an invite to that room. And I barely made the cut, if you ask me. So I would definitely consider yourself lucky to get your hands on this PDF because most of you watching this did not get invited to that room. And if you don't know this stuff, you're never gonna get invited to a room like that. So go ahead and grab that PDF, read it and implement it. And I promise it's worth your time because if you implement just one of these things in your business, I promise you it will grow. I've already implemented several of the things and I'm seeing the results. I really, truly, deeply hope this video brought you value. And of course, please subscribe. And if you wanna become a value member of Close Nation, tell people about the channel and spread the word. I will see you in the next one.